Uh, okay, folks, let's uh, continue. And uh, in this lesson, I'm going to add my uh, uh, plane effectors and maybe our shear effector to our main cloner just to uh, make our viewport a bit more nicer. I'm just going to my uh, setting, render setting, control B, and make sure that the film aspect is uh, HD. It just gets it a bit more better. I'm going to create a simple basic material for the uh, floor and let's apply this to our studio floor so we're just having a bit more better time seeing what's going on so there we go that's great or why we don't add this thing to our cloner see if this is gonna work at all quick shading okay that's better now uh, the first thing is the plane effectors that we have right now and uh, if you take a look okay I think we're going to hide this sodium because it's really make it really hard to see what's going on okay now let's uh, for this first plane effector let's go to our top view I wanna have something like this for my main my first plane effector so not too big okay Let's see, uh, I actually need to understand uh, where exactly I want to start adding these plane effectors. And uh, so that's why we need to enable our main clones and see what's going on with them. And let's just go to sort of medium level of details and enable the studio for a quick second. Now, as you can see, this is our first burst, and I think about frame 100 is a good point. Okay, we're going to start at frame 100, and let's uh, again disable our uh, studio, alt and double click on this, and also uh disable our main cloner there we go and back to high level of detail now for this first planer let's name it plane zero one i'm gonna go to its fall off change the size on x i don't want to be that big and let's move it a bit down here and move it on z axis go to its coordinates and I'm gonna select all the positions while you and control click on that and go to something like 250 maybe and now I can move this guy down here to this side okay now you get this sort of motion that's too much definitely so I'm going to display and effect your parameters and go to something like this and also in the fall off tab I want to have much more fall off go to the parameters again <laughs> and this is what you can have here and um, uh, one of the things that I really want to have I don't want to see them quite in this uh, nice perfect motion I want a bit more of and uh, irregularity so for that matter what you can do uh, is add a, a random effector and use this as your uh, waiter so what I mean I just put this random effector here make sure it has been applied to your random effector before uh, the plane effector for this matter and uh, go to your random effector uh, make sure uh, turn off all the parameters we're just going to use this weight transform and it will add the uh, randomization to our clones and uh, uh, make our clone have different weights so let's just go to something quite small something like maybe 10 percent and let's see that's definitely good okay but that's not too bad 
so what I mean by weight transform, if you select your uh, cloner right now and go to your transform and change the display to weight, and uh, let's just take a look. Hopefully we can see them. <laughs> Let's see, a random parameter, if you add more weight, if you take a look close, very close, you can see some of our clones, uh, see, go to 100, as you can see some of the clones are yellow, some of them are orange, some of them are red. And this is what this random, uh, this weight transform does in the uh, random effector. Uh, you can have the weight transform for different effectors and each effector based on its functionality uh, basically does different job to our uh, cloners for the random effector basically to randomize the weight so uh, the effectors that come after this random effector will take into consideration the weight of those clones and act based on them. So that's why for example, when it's 100, you get this quite a lot of variation. That's too much, definitely. I'm just going to something like maybe 8, 9%. And uh, there you go. You get this nice effect. This is our first uh, plane effector. Let's me go there, duplicate this plane effector. And this is going to be our uh, second plane effector. And make sure... Uh, just go to transform and display to none and add this second plane effector to the list and for this one let's go to our uh, coordinates and select the second plane effector I'm just going to control shift click and this parameter so we don't have any effect on that and uh, let's move this second plane effector to this side this time and maybe I just make it a bit bigger just let's go to its original size 100 and go to the coordinates about uh, maybe here I'm going to uh, go to my coordinates create a keyframe and 250 maybe something like this move it there and now Now you get this, I think the random waiter is really too much, so let's put something like 3%, 2%, and there we go. And the next thing is that you need to, okay, so let's um, select this plane effector now we have this sort of motion about here I want to add um, another plane effector and let's add this plane effector I'm going to rename it to uh, plane 03 go to the cloner make sure it has been added to the list of your effectors for this planer uh, plane effector again I'm going to select it and control shift click on here so it gets rid of all of the motions I'm gonna select this guy and put it in here and this time I'm just going to move it uh, sorry move it something like this okay that's a nice simple motion okay uh, let's I just think we just need the X position so we'll just uh, see where exactly we want to start our motion I think something like here. So let's click on this X position and in uh, something like maybe 100 frames and we go to something like this. Control click it there and I think. I really want to select these two keyframes and just make sure it happens a bit quicker. I want to have this kind of overlap with this, the motion of our two other plane effector. And also what I'm going to do, 
So select this uh, third plane, go to the polyp in the X direction. And the effect of this one, I want to be not that big. So let's put something like 35. So there we go. So basically, I use this plane effector to uh, kind of indicate to the viewer what is our logo. And the first indication would be this planar, as you can see. Just let's see what the motion looks like right now. I'm going to hit play, even though it's not going to be in real time, but um, uh, it's going to be just useful here. Okay, great. Now I'm going to just uh, duplicate this plane effector. And this is going to be our uh, plane effector number four. And make sure uh, it gets added to your list. And just uh, I'm going to select this guy, right, right click on this and uh, show tracks. In here, make sure you also have your third plane effector. I'm just going to upset uh, these uh, two guys. So select this fourth plane effector. And I want this uh, fourth one to happen a bit uh, after the third one. So if I go through, you can see, I think we sort of need, you see now those two plane effectors act this way. But um, I think right now it's just too much. Let's see. Okay, and I want to make sure that this one, let's actually duck our timeline in here and. Um, middle mouse click on this button here it will kind of duck it here so now we have our timeline in here now the plane effector number two number four i want to have a bit more effects let's put something like 85 and now get this is uh i just want to make sure that this first Let's just make sure it's about here. Go to its coordinates and set a keyframe. And for this one to set, uh, sorry, set keyframes here. Select the fourth one. And let's just see it's, there we go. Put it down here so it's not get affected <laughs> okay and uh, now we should have a nice look there we go this is uh, this problem yet and it is definitely this one so let's I don't have any keyframe back here but if you take a look, let's just set a keyframe here too. And this, I think that's because of that. Okay, I'm going to actually delete this keyframe here, select my third plane effector, and hopefully we can solve this problem. That's because the key interpolations, but we're really trying to solve it and hopefully, oh my God, what's wrong? We have two keyframes there. Looks like though, yeah. So we have these two keyframes. As you can see, this one caused the problems. Let's delete it and now we should be okay. There we go. Let's uh, enable the fourth plane effector and B, and um, I change my to isopalm. You should be able to see the effect. There we go. And let's just hit play and see what we have here. And now we can definitely add uh, something. 
like the layout factor to make the effect much more nicer and now it's time to add the shader factor and as you can see this uh, guy still has some problems both of them we really need to change their the place of their last keyframe so let's move it completely here and for the last one again this is where our last keyframe is and there we go select the plane effector coordinate okay in the next lesson we're going to be adding our shader effector so uh, let's just uh, enable our studio and enable our main clones and uh, we can now see what's going on oh yeah that's gonna be too much to see but as you can see we have those uh, uh, nice clones and also we got these other clones around it so we are uh, sort of good to go uh, let me um, start working on the next lesson